Well, good evening, my friends, and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman out here with another American classic. What I've got here in my hands is a Remington Model 31. This particular shotgun here is a Model 31L, being that it has a hardened aluminum receiver. It's much lighter than the standard Model 31 that has a steel receiver. Now, the Model 31 came out in well, if you guessed 1931, you're correct. And they were produced until 1949. I think this one here in particular is a 1947. And, and then in 1950, Remington introduced their ever popular Model 870. It was a pump shotgun that is just quite legendary. But these guns here were also very smooth operating, very quick handling. And this was Remington's answer in competition to the Winchester Model 12. They're you know very dependable shotguns and uh, the Model 31 was available in 20 gauge, 16 gauge like this one here and in 12 gauge. I've always wanted a 16 gauge I've never actually owned one so I started looking around ever since I made that video last summer asking the question is the 16 gauge still viable? Well I have to say it still is. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the 16 gauge. Nothing. It's a great gauge. I mean it's right in between the 12 and the 20 and the ever popular 12 gauge and 20 gauge come in so many different loadings and uh, the 16 gauge is somewhat limited where all the shells that you can get for it now are two and three quarter inch but they come in different loadings. You know there's skeet loads and lighter target loads to heavy field loads, even magnum loads in two and three quarter. And here on the table, I've got an example of what I just recently found here. I'll give you a close up. I started looking around for some 16 gauge shells and Remington makes these currently and then uh, these Remington Express these are a heavy field load this is a uh, one and an eighth ounce of number six shot and then Winchester here's a number eight shot one ounce and number six shot in one ounce they also make a heavier field load. And here's some older Winchester that was given to me, but still quite good. I'll take one out of the box here and show it to you. Good looking shell. Nice crimp. You know, nothing wrong with these shells. Here's some older Remington Express. This was from back in the 1960s, I believe. There you can see the DuPont logo is still there. I've got several boxes of this that were given to me, you know. And then Federal still makes the 16 gauge. This is a brand new box of it. I just got two weeks ago. They have their famous purple hull 16 gauge. A lot of you are familiar with those. There they are. These are, oh, uh, let's see. These are loaded with one ounce of seven and a half shot okay and then here's some other loads that i found this is some rio i'm not sure where these are made uh, let's see doesn't tell me where it's oh, made in spain okay and these are also one ounce of seven and a half shot good looking shells i mean really good looking shells you know these are all brand new, still being produced. And then here I found some high quality ammunition. This stuff's made in Britain. Um, let's see, it doesn't give me, yeah, this one ounce of shot of number eight. There you can see these shells. Nice crimp on those. Good quality. Now the 16 gauge can still be reloaded. Um, you can still find 16 gauge shot shell wads 
by several different makers. I know Remington still makes them, and I think Winchester, pretty sure they still make them, and a few different companies out there that still make reloading components for shot shells still make 16 gauge shot shell wads. And all these shells, like I said, can be reloaded. You know, they got that nice crimp on there that can be recrimped if you have a good quality loader. And uh, the primer and the powder is the same as a 12 or a 20 gauge, so you know, no problem there. Well, anyhow, getting back to this old Model 31 Remington, I wanted to talk about it a little bit more. One of the main reasons I got this particular gun is because I've always been interested in the 16 gauge and I wanted a good pump action like this Model 31. I would have preferred maybe an 870, but I ran across this one and I'm glad I got it because it's a really tough old shotgun. It's well made. It's very lightweight, you know, quick handling. If I decide to go on a rabbit hunt or maybe even quail hunting again, this would be a gun that I'd like to carry in the field. Now this one in particular did not come with a ventilated rib. Although some Model 31s were equipped with a ventilated rib barrel. This one here is a smooth barrel. And a lot of the older sportsmen, older hunters, preferred a smooth barrel because that's what they came up with. But for me, it makes no difference. You know, I could go either way and it'd be just fine with me. Now another reason that I wanted this shotgun and was a real point of interest for me was uh, this one here was equipped with a poly choke system. I've never owned a shotgun that had a poly choke so uh, you know I decided to get this one because I was really curious about it to see if it actually worked and we're gonna try it out here in a minute but for those of you that don't know what a poly choke is what this does is it actually gives you the option of changing your shot pattern, the tightness of your shot pattern while you're out in the field just by turning this collar right here. You know, you've got a setting for improved cylinder, for modified, and for full, full choke. Be sure you open the shotgun and make sure it's unloaded just like I just did before you start messing around up here with your fingers this close to the muzzle. Always make sure that you handle the gun safely. So unload the gun before you adjust your poly choke if you have a shotgun that's equipped with this system. But what I'm going to do is I've got some targets that I drew out here with four inch circles and we're going to set them out and we're going to shoot them with the same shell, same load but on different poly choke settings to see just how effective that system really is. We're gonna be setting them out about 30 yards and then once I get done shooting, we'll check the results and see how well that system works. So stick with me, this will be interesting. Okay guys, the loads I'm using today are these Remington game loads. This is one ounce of number eight shot. Like I said, all three shots will be the same I'll take a shot with three different settings on that poly choke and then we'll check the results. So that one there is set for improved cylinder. Okay, now we'll get zoomed in here on this target. That's exactly 30 yards out there, folks. Let me get a little closer. Okay, there it is. I'll do my best to get it centered up. Here we go. Okay, here we go with the modified choke. Go ahead and get this set.
Okay, now we're going to switch this from modified choke and crank it up to full choke here. And see if we get a little tighter pattern with that. Same distance, same shell. Here we go. Let me go grab these targets and we'll make a comparison and see if that poly choke actually works. Okay friends, here's the pattern with the improved cylinder. As you can see, most of these hit a little bit low and from looking at these patterns, I can see my guns patterning just a little bit low. There we got three shot pellets within that four inch circle with the improved cylinder. Then I tightened the choke to modified and you can see we've got more pellets inside that four inch circle. Most of them hit a little bit lower. As you can see, there's a little bit denser pattern down here. But we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hits inside that four inch circle. And then here in the full choke setting, you can see a much denser pattern. Like I said, most of these hit a little bit low. The gun's shooting just a tad low. But uh, you can see there's a definite difference between each setting. Here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 pellets in that 4 inch circle on full choke. And there probably would have been more than that if you look down here if that pattern had been placed a little bit higher. So that gun's shooting just a tad low. Not bad, but uh, you know you can see that there's definitely a difference between the three settings for the poly choke. <laughs> well folks there's the dough right there. I think that's the dough. Standing right there at my 50 yard target. That may be one of the fawns. She's facing me. No, that's one of the fawns. But anyway, they've been coming up here every day, and the reason they're coming right over here is because there's a big wild cherry tree that's dropping fruit right now, and to them it's just like candy, so they're homing in on it. Yesterday morning, I looked out here and there were two bucks out here, an eight point and a six point. That deer is just standing there watching me while I'm making a video. <laughs> but anyway, getting back to this old shotgun, once again, um, what else can I say about it? Well, one of the main differences between the Model 31 and the Model 870 is that the Model 31 only has one action bar here, whereas the 870 has two. It has dual action bars. And the 870 is somewhat easier to maintain. This one here is not too bad. Um, you can take the barrel off just by unscrewing this assembly setting here at the end. Get that unscrewed. And then just twist the barrel and it comes right out. Of course you want to make sure the gun's unloaded. But now you can get to the inside of the action there and wipe all that down and clean your barrel if you need to and then to put it back together just slide it back in to the receiver twist it until it aligns right here just like that and then tighten it back down Now that old shotgun's back in service mode. You know, you're ready to take it afield. So once you get your gun, whether it's a shotgun or a rifle, ready for service and cleaned, before you put it away, if you have a blued barrel or blued receiver, remember, 
that's still bare metal. I mean, it offers some protection, but if you out here like I am today, I'm, I'm sweaty, it's hot, and I grab that barrel with my sweaty hands, and then I put that gun away, in a month's time, there's going to be rusty fingerprints all over that steel. So get a lightly impregnated oil cloth, like I do, I like to use mineral oil, and wipe the gun down. It'll neutralize the salts that come out of the sweat in your hands, and it'll keep your gun in good condition so that when you get ready to use it again, it'll be like new again. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out the video and say thank you. I appreciate you coming along. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned a little something from it. I always like these old shotguns and rifles, especially old 22s, as you well know. But uh, I really like featuring these old guns because they're a part of American history and uh, they're a part of America's hunting and sporting heritage as well. And that's what this channel is about. It's about the outdoors, you know, outdoor adventures and learning a little bit about the tools that we use in the outdoors. So with that being said, remember, if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever your outdoor pursuit happens to be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. But also remember this, hit that like button, smash the bell icon and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this will be coming your way. So until next time, y'all take good care of yourselves and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. I'll be seeing you.